it seems there is something always happening with Hillsong Church. Pastor Dooley mentioned that it seems to be happening a lot. Every March, since they were going through stuff last March, last year, and now this March, more is happening. I think I'll agree with him. Maybe skipping March is not such a bad idea, right? If anyone recalls this time in March last year, was a tough week and a tough time. I had to get up and stand before you regarding other difficult and painful things. And here we are again in March, dealing with some very serious and confronting allegations. I am planning to skip March next year <laughs> and head straight to April. <laughs> Armed with reams of financial records and genuine Hillsong Church board documents he received from the whistleblower, Andrew Wilkie, an independent member of the Australian Parliament accused Hillsong Church of money laundering and tax evasion. Deputy Speaker, last year a whistleblower provided me with financial records and board papers that show Hillsong is breaking numerous laws in Australia and around the world relating to fraud, money laundering and tax evasion. For example, this document shows how in 2021, four members of the Houston family and their friends enjoyed a three-day luxury retreat in Cancun, Mexico, using $150,000 of church money. And these documents show former leader Brian Houston treating private jets like Ubers, again all with church money. For example, in one three-month period, Brian Houston's trips cost $55,000, $52,000, $30,000, $22,000 and $20,000. While all this seems quite shocking and kind of disappointing, it began with a whistleblower who sued Hillsong Church in federal court August last year. Former Hillsong employee Natalie Moses filed a case against Hillsong claiming it breached the Fair Work Act. She alleges her eternal audits of Hillsong uncovered dubious bookkeeping unlikely to be compliant with legislation. Hillsong's lawyers told the ABC it will be defending the matter. The Australian Charities and Not-for-Profits Commission, ACNC, launched an investigation into Hillsong in March to examine its compliance obligations as a registered charity. The documents allege dubious financial record keeping, the misappropriation of church finances, and claim Hillsong leaders used tax free money for large cash gifts to Hillsong founder Brian Houston and his family. Natalie Moses' lawyer filed a 25 statement which accused Hillsong of illegally hiding its international transfers by making payments through its US based entities. In a Hillsong service which was streamed last Sunday, Stephen Crouch, the chairman of Hillsong Australian Board, addressed Wilkie's allegation and Natalie's accusations. As I've previously, previously made you aware, in August last year, a claim in the federal court, including allegations about some of Hillsong's financial transactions, was made. From Stephen's address, as part of the court process, the court ordered Hillsong and the former employee to resolve the claims through mediation. Hillsong entered the mediation in good faith, and until last week, our view was the mediation was in its final stages. It's important that during the mediation process, all parties to, uh, to keep the mediation and associated documents confidential. As soon as our media mediation obligations are over, we will provide you with an update and we will detail the findings of the forensic report from Grant Thornton. As you may have guessed already, these documents from the claims may have made their way into the Australian Parliament sitting. This week, perhaps not coincidentally, Andrew Wilkie, a member of the Australian Parliament, used parliamentary privilege to make a public thousands of Hillsong documents. This would have been undertaken knowing that Hillsong has no real opportunity of reply, a right which would be afforded to any other member in the parliament, and it denied Hillsong procedural justice. Mr. Wilkie did not contact our church to inform us that he was in possession of the documents, nor did he attempt to clarify any of the information in the documents that he had in his possession. 
which he chose then to make public. Wilkie alleged that Dooley, Hillsong's new global senior pastor, indulged right along with the church's embattled founder, Brian Houston. Meanwhile, the, head, the new head of Hillsong, Phil Dooley, has told church followers he only flies economy. But these documents show him clocking up $58,000 in business class flights for him and his daughter to Guatemala, $42,000 in business class flights to Mexico, and $32,000 in business class flights from Cape Town to Sydney via the US. To this, Pastor Dooley in a Hillsong service last Sunday expressed his disappointment that such accusations were made in a place where Hillsong couldn't be availed an opportunity to explain the actual truth. I want to talk about allegations raised about my personal finances and the way things operate in this role that I now find myself in. Last year, Lucinda and I did travel regularly to South Africa because we are endeavouring to manage both the responsibilities of this role and the needs of our family and our church in South Africa. And there were extra travel costs associated with that. We've now cons consolidated our family in Sydney, and so that level of travel between here and South Africa has reduced. Last year, I only spoke in one church other than a Hillsong church. That was in Guatemala. And over 60% of that flight was covered by the church in Guatemala. I've also paid a portion of that flight myself to cover costs of my daughter flying with me. The rest was covered by our global church budget as I went to do ministry in both our church in Sao Paulo and Buenos Aires. In fact, that trip involved nine different flights and not all of them were business class. I spoke and engaged in ministry work every day except one. And anyone who has done any kind of travel knows that this is tough on your body and it's unsustainable. But I also want to say we are committed to managing our travel requirements effectively with flight times and associated costs and, and seeing where we can adjust so that it, the, we, we pay less. The harsh reality is, is that post-COVID world travel costs have been really high. Secondly, I did ask that on some of these trips, my traveling companion would be my daughter. Our family was separated for much of last year and this was an opportunity for us to be together. I do not take that lightly and it is not always the case and not always the case going to be the case going forward. Other times, other members of our team have traveled with me and they will continue to. Why do we do this? Because the demands of this role are high and if health is a priority, then we have to find ways to ensure we can stay healthy in order to serve our church effectively. In his parliament report, Wilkie alleged that Hillsong followers believe that the money they give is used to help the poor, yet that money is actually used to do the kind of shopping that would embarrass a Kardashian. If you can outdo a Kardashian in spending, it must be quite some serious kind of spending for a church organisation. Deputy Speaker, Hillsong followers believe that the money they put in the poor, a poor box, goes to the poor. But these documents show how that money is actually used to do the kind of shopping that would embarrass a Kardashian. For example, a $6,500 Cartier watch for Bobby Houston, $2,500 in Louis Vuitton luggage, a $2,500 watch for Phil Dooley, two watches worth $15,000 for Joel and Julia Abel, shopping sprees for designer clothes at Saks Fifth Avenue, and even $16,000 for custom skateboards. This was not all. Wilkie had more to say in his presentation. As the Christian Post puts it, those close to the church's inner circle also benefited from cash gifts, Wilkie contends. And then there's the cash gifts. For instance, $15,000 for Darren Kiddo's 50th birthday, $36,000 for Gary Clark's 30th anniversary and $4,300 for his 60th birthday, plus up to $30,000 to board members some of whom allegedly helped cover up the sexual abuse carried out by Frank Houston, Brian Houston's father. Wilkie also pointed to curious payments made to Chris Hogg's founder and leader of the Church of the Highlands, one of the largest churches in America, and Paul DeJock, founding pastor of life. There's also the curious payments of $10,000 each to Paul DeJong and Chris Hodges, the external pastors who investigated allegations of Brian Houston's 
2019 sexual misconduct in a Sydney hotel room involving a female parishioner. In this um, presentation, the Australian politician pointed to more than $1 million per year going to Hillsong musicians like Brian Houston's son, Joel Houston, for royalties. Deputy Speaker, the documents also show church donations being used to pay more than a million dollars a year in royalties to Hillsong musicians like Joel Houston, who's Brian Houston's son. Moreover, the documents show a $15.7 million loan from Hillsong, very unlikely ever to be repaid, which funded the purchase of Festival Hall in Melbourne. Now, at face value, this appears unremarkable, except that this is a commercial venture run by Hillsong's community venues company and is ineligible to benefit from tax-deductible church donations. And all of this, Deputy Speaker, in the context of the documents also revealing Hillsong earns $80 million more in Australian annual income than it reports publicly. Pastors T.D. Jakes and Joyce Meyer were among those mentioned in Wilkie's presentation as he accused Hillsong Church of using honorariums to hide income. Deputy Speaker, the criminality isn't limited to Australia as evidenced by these documents, which show how honorariums are used to disguise income and avoid tax. For example, US Pastor Joyce Meyer enjoyed honorariums of $160,000, $133,000, $100,000 $32,000. And US Pastor T.D. Jake received $71,000 and $120,000 with a staggering $77,000 worth of airfares to and from Australia thrown in. And in return, Mr Houston goes to America and received, you guessed it Deputy Speaker, his own eye-watering honorariums. Moreover, Deputy Speaker, sending millions of dollars of Australian charitable donations overseas is illegal in some circumstances. Every time you hear Hillsong Church money mismanagement, some names are hard to miss. Names like a former Hillsong New York pastor Carl Letts. This one was no different. And the documents also show disgraced former head of Hillsong New York, Carl Lentz, being paid a salary of 220 thousand dollars, most of it tax free, and tens of thousands of dollars of church donations to run the New York Church's Celebrity Green Room to cover catering and the cost of gifts for visiting celebrities. And in the UK, the documents show Hillsong Australia guaranteed a five and a half million dollar loan for Hillsong London to purchase the former Hippodrome nightclub, all from tax exempt Australian income at a time when London was experiencing serious financial troubles. Wilkie argued that the whistleblower presented the documents to several watchdog agencies, including the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profits Commission, and no action was taken against the church. Mr. Speaker, I've very, uh, sorry, Madam Speaker, Deputy Speaker, I've verified that these documents are genuine and am shocked that when offered to the ATO, ASIC and ACNC last year under whistleblower legislation, not one of those agencies acted. And that is a failure of regulatory oversight every bit as alarming as Hillsong's criminality. This week, as Stephen mentioned, Andrew Wilkie used parliamentary privilege to table thousands of documents that he'd received about Hillsong Church, our church, your church and my church. Pastor Dooley addressed some of these issues, even though he mentioned that he's not in position to address all of these issues because some are still in court. Uh, but we will do whatever's necessary to investigate these, as Stephen's already mentioned. We're not able to go into some details today because there's still a lot before the courts, but I'm gonna speak about certain allegations regarding me personally. That same Sunday, he went on to mention a lot of the activities that Hillsong Church participates in, denying the accusation raised by Wilkie that they spend the money on their personal expenses. But this week in particular, it's felt like we we're a part of something really wrong. Something that involves all kinds of sinister activity. It's all about self-enrichment, that we're some of the most terrible people in society, <laughs> that we add no value and we don't care about anyone but ourselves. It's horrible. It's far from the way Jesus intended us to live as his followers on earth. And it's not who we desire to be. I want to start by saying I'm sorry. I'm sorry that as your pastor, you have to go through this and your kids have to go through this. 
I also want to say that the allegations are very concerning and as Stephen Crouch has mentioned, a full forensic investigation has already been conducted by Grant Thornton. There are thousands of documents that contain information that uh, I had no knowledge personally about, but I'll take full responsibility for how we do things going forward. If you want to know more about some of these endeavors that Hillsong Church participates in, some of the charities, you can go ahead and watch that video which was streamed on Sunday. I'll leave the link in the description below. I'll also be leaving some of the links where you can read more about the reports that have been filed against Hillsong Church in the same regard. I'm deeply disappointed that Mr. Wil Wilkie would choose to use parliamentary privilege so that he does not have to be held accountable for whatever he tabled, particularly when there was no obstacle to Mr. Wilkie contacting the church for an explanation. Clearly, he doesn't appear to be interested in the answer, and it kind of feels like being king hit from behind. But Jesus loves you, Mr. Wilkie. And we believe Jesus loves all Australians, regardless of their culture, their background, their sexuality. You're all loved by Jesus. And Mr. Wilkie, you're still welcome to attend any of our services. We're no doubt. <laughs> You'll be greeted with a smile and a warm welcome. In fact, we have a location in Hobart just down the road from